says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The addition of Father is recognizing who God is. When you go back and you read the Gospels, Jesus refers to God as Father over and over and over and over again. And this was unheard of for the Jew, for that was borderline blasphemous to call God Father. God was up there and we were down here and the priest stood in separation between us and God because we, we, we honored God so much that we wouldn't have that kind of familiarity with God. And yet Jesus calls him Father. And then Jesus tells us that he's our Father as well. And bringing this connection between God and man. This familiarity. And as we talked about the last couple weeks, Jesus is in agony up there, right? Uh, if, if you were in class this morning, we talked about the agony of cross and the, the horrible nature of the torture that would go on through crucifixion. So Jesus is hanging there in agony. And last week we talked about he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There's torment. There's agony there. But he also says this, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Praying this prayer to God. So as I think about that, I, I can't help but think about two other instances where Jesus is talking about his relationship with the Father. And, and so we go backwards in time just a little bit. Go back to the garden. When Jesus is in the garden and he's got the sweat like drops of blood and he's in anguish, he's in agony because of what's about to come. And he says, it says, uh, say, oh, sorry. And, uh, and as he's there, he's praying out to God, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. It's what it makes me think of. But I keep going back to this bedtime prayer. And I know it was a common prayer because later on in chapter 7 of Acts, Stephen would say the same thing as he's about to die. Except instead of saying, Father, he would say, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. This is very similar to what Jesus has said on the cross. But back in Luke chapter 22, he says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Imagine if Jesus had gotten his way and he didn't have to go to the cross. What would that mean for us? We'd all be condemned in our sins, doomed to separation from God forever. But because Jesus was willing to say, not my will, but yours be done, we have salvation. And at the cross, when he says, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. I think he's also saying this, your will be done. Your will be done. But let's go back even further. Back to John chapter 10. And Jesus would say this, for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. Who killed Jesus on the cross? The cross didn't kill him. We talked about that again this morning in class. The cross didn't kill him. No one died of crucifixion in six hours. It was unheard of. Jesus says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And in Luke 23, he says he died right after that. Now, next week, we're going to talk about one more statement that he's going to make, and then he'll, then he'll die. But, but here, this, into your hands I commit my spirit, I think this is very much him saying two things. Father, your will be done. And him also saying, look, nobody's taking my life. I'm giving it voluntarily. So he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Who knows whether he was thinking about this bedtime prayer? Because in the, in the, the tradition of the first century Christians, when they would talk about somebody dying, they would just refer to it as sleep. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about Jesus raising Jairus' daughter, and, and everybody's in there mourning, and he goes in there, and, and, and he says, don't worry, she's not dead but asleep, and they all laughed at him. Jesus had a different perspective of death, did he? And so here he says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, this, this bedtime prayer. But he's submitting to the Father, and he's about to lay his life down of his own free will. 
And so, so I think there are three reasons for this statement from Jesus on the cross. The first one is that Jesus willingly died on the cross. He didn't die because of the cross. You go back and you look at that story. It said, with a loud voice, he cried out. He wasn't dying yet. And then he gives up his spirit and then he dies willingly. The second thing that I think is a reason for him to say this statement is that he was submitting to the will of the Father, whom he trusted. Go back and read Psalm 31. Look at the trust that the psalmist had for God in that psalm. Now we have seen three different psalms that Jesus has quoted from the cross, right? When he said, I thirst. When he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And now into your hands I commit my spirit. He's quoting scripture in the midst of his agony. For your sake and for mine. But he was submitting to the will of his father whom he trusted. And I think the third reason that he would say this is because he, he knew that death was more like sleep. And, and that's the way his followers would understand it for generations to come. The death is more like sleep. That's why Paul would say, we do not grieve like those who have no hope. That's the blessing of being able to do a funeral for a person who has followed Jesus. Because a funeral is just a time of remembrance for us. But they're already on to much better things in the presence of the Father. Death is just a hiccup. It's just sleep. Because we have been promised resurrection. And so Jesus, on the cross, was thinking about the promise from God that he would not let his Holy One see decay. Jesus knew he would be raised from the dead. He had predicted that all the way back in, in Luke chapter 9 and chapter 10. He would predict his death and his resurrection. He knew it would come. And he knew that he would have to put his trust entirely in the Father in order to get through this. Later, after, after Jesus had said, I, I, I don't, nobody takes it from me. I lay it down on my own accord. In, Luke, in John chapter 14, he would say this. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. Who's the ruler of this world? It's Satan. If you're not living for God, folks, you don't get to pick a third side. You either live for God or you live for Satan. That's the way this works. And if you choose to live for yourself, if you don't choose a side, then you're choosing Satan's side. We don't like to talk about that very much. But that's really the way this works. There's no third side here. So he said, the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me. He's talking about going to the cross here. I do as my Father has commanded me so that, here's the reason. So that the world may know that I love the Father. Let me ask you, church. Do you love the Father? Do you love the Father? Yes. Will you do as Jesus did? But I do as the Father has commanded me. So that the world may know that I love the Father. Jesus said there will be plenty of people that will say, Lord, Lord, but won't be saved because they didn't do what the Father commanded. It begins right here. But this isn't the end all be all of it. It is a daily dedication to the Father. Every single day we are given the gift of, of repentance, the gift to start over. It's a gift. It's not something to be ashamed of. I messed up yesterday. Yes, we all did. And so today we go, I want to start over. And the blood of Jesus continually cleanses our sins. That's good news. And so for us, every day, we need to pray when we wake and when we sleep. Father, into your hands I commit my actions, my thoughts, my life, my spirit. That's in essence what Jesus is saying there. That's what the, the Hebrews would understand. When he said spirit, he's talking about everything encompassed there. He's not just talking about the Holy Spirit living within him. 
Because we know that when he was raised from the dead, he still had the Holy Spirit. Go back and read that part too. He's talking about his life. And I want to ask you, church, can you say that same prayer? Father, in your hands I commit my spirit. In your hands I commit my life. Because that's what he wants from us. He wants us to every single day when we wake up, say, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And when we lay down to sleep at night, to let all of the worries of the world go and say, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. And for some of you who are parents, sometimes you need to say, Father, into your hands, I commit the spirits of my children, too. Because you're holding on to worry that you don't need to hold on to. Understand that. So we are called today to start over. Today the challenge for you and for me is are you willing to surrender to the Father and say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. We're going to have two prayers this morning. Okay? Two prayers. I'm going to tell you about the second one in just a minute. But would you pray with me right now? Father, I thank you for Jesus' example of submission and surrender to you. And Father, I pray that you would help us to surrender in the same way. Give us courage to follow you in all our lives. Give us the desire to follow you. Give us the support group of family here in this congregation to help us to be devoted to you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning, the second prayer is a prayer that I would like for us to pray together, out loud, on purpose. If you would like to begin anew today, e even if you have been devoted to the Father, but you just want to join in with this, if this is a devotion that you constantly have to the Father, then I would like for you to pray what Jesus prayed with me today. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. If you're not ready for that, though, then I would like to ask you to remain silent during this time and to consider the implications of what such a prayer means in your life. And so, for all of us here today, as a way to respond to this message, I would like for you to join with me in this devotion, in this dedication to the Father, praying with me out loud what Jesus prayed on the cross. Would you join with me? Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Amen. If you made that commitment today and you haven't been living for Christ but you decided to start over today, would you come and let us know that so we can celebrate that with you? Because we want to join with you. It's easy to get taken right back out into the world when we're by ourselves. It's a lot harder when we have a family that surrounds us and, and supports us in our desire to walk for God. If there's any other things that we can pray for you for, any other prayer requests, or joys, celebrations, heartache, would you let us know by coming down front while we stand and while we sing? Here's my